These past few years have been a wild ride for SpaceX at their Starbase rocket testing facility. From the earliest days when we heard that Elon Musk was buying up land near a desolate village in South Texas, to the first flight of the Starhopper, to the explosive landings of the first starships, to the present day where final preparations are in motion for the first orbital launch of the largest and most powerful rocket ship ever created. Starbase is such a wild place, it's hard to believe that it even exists. A playground for the world's smartest rocket scientists and engineers where they build, test, and explode the bleeding edge technology in human spaceflight. And it all happens out in the open, in clear view of the public, where the most devoted of SpaceX fans meticulously capture and record every second of the action. And now, the moment that all of this has been building to, the first launch of the Starship Super Heavy to orbit, is only weeks away. And I know we say this often, but the timeline is more realistic now than it has ever been before. Today we are going to talk about why that is as we get into all of the latest happenings over at Starbase and what we can expect to see in the months and years to come. Because launching to orbit is not the end. It's not even the beginning of the end, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. This is the Space Race. Starbase has evolved into a virtually all-in-one Starship facility, where they can build, test, launch, and land the rocket all in one location. The only key component that doesn't get made at Starbase is the Raptor engine. Those are manufactured and tested at a separate SpaceX in McGregor, Texas, where the company owns 4,300 acres of land. The company does a lot of engine testing here, so it needs to be very far away from anything else because they make a ton of noise under normal use, and sometimes they do even explode. The infrastructure at Starbase has grown wildly over the past two years. The rocket facility has nearly surrounded and swallowed up the old village of Boca Chica. Not that Boca Chica was ever much on anything to begin with, it's a strange place. A town that they started building back in the 60s, but a strong hurricane hit the area and scared off the property developer, leaving just a quarter mile of dirt road with a couple dozen bungalow houses. They never even installed running water, and it's just kind of sat like that, frozen in time, until Elon Musk realized there was still cheap land available on the Gulf Coast and started buying it out to build a staging ground for his mission to colonize Mars. You literally can't make this stuff up, it's gold. Starbase sprawls out along the roadside of Highway 4, Boca Chica Boulevard. As you approach from the west, it looks like a usual industrial zone with big towers and cranes until you reach the iconic Starbase sign and see the nose cones of rocket ships peeking over the walls. The bulk of the space is taken up by the Starship factory. There is a series of low, wide tents or spring structures where the rockets are manufactured one piece at a time in ring segments. Then the rings are stacked into either a Starship or a Super Heavy booster in one of the vertical assembly buildings. There is a high bay, a wide bay, and a newly constructed mega bay. At any given time, there are going to be multiple vehicles in progress at the Star Factory. As of right now, there are the fully completed Ship 24 and Booster 7. They are joined by a mostly completed Ship 25 and partially assembled Ship 26. There are parts kicking around the factory for up to ship 32 already, and booster number 8 should be ready to go as well. So, they keep very busy around here. When the rockets are ready for testing, they get loaded onto a heavy transport and slowly rolled the 2.3 miles to the launch pad. The strip of Highway 4 between the Star Factory and the launch pad was freshly paved for spaceship transporting. It's the only section of that road that isn't a bumpy mess. The launch facility itself is where the magic happens, far enough away from the factory and the village that no one is in danger from an exploding rocket and only a stone's throw away from the ocean at Boca Chica Beach. This is one of the biggest gripes that locals have with SpaceX. Rocket testing ruins their day at the beach. Okay, in all fairness, there have been a lot of gripes with SpaceX and what they're up to down there mostly revolving around the environmental impacts of launching and possibly exploding the largest rocket ever created, 
But that was all set aside this year when the FAA granted SpaceX approval to conduct at least five orbital test flights from their launch site. We've been talking for over a year now about how SpaceX is only weeks away from launching the orbital Starship. And to be fair, all we can really go by is what we're told by the people in charge. But unfortunately, that happens to be Elon Musk, and he is the most unreliable timekeeper in the game. But now, in the fall of 2022, we can confidently say that we are closer than ever. (laughs) That's not a lie, at least. In all seriousness, though, there is a lot to back up Elon's most recent claims that Starship will fly in November of this year. A big one is the Raptor 2 engine. These didn't even exist a year ago when SpaceX first stacked the original 420 Starship and Super Heavy combo. Those vehicles were loaded with the Raptor version 1, which was significantly less powerful, and they even had fewer engines in that booster. 29 versus the current setup of 33 engines. So it's very unlikely that old Starship would have reached space, there just wasn't enough thrust. And there also wasn't nearly enough ground infrastructure to pull it off. We've seen so much work happen at Starbase this year, concentrated just on the orbital launch mount, the Mechazilla Tower, and the tank farm. Elon calls this infrastructure stage zero, and it is critical to making this whole thing possible. The launch mount provides fuel and power to the booster and is responsible for spin-starting the Raptor engines through external connections. This saves a ton of weight on the rocket, but adds even more complexity to the launch mount. We know that an explosion during one of these engine spin prime tests with booster 7 on the launch mount this summer set back progress on the orbital test, but it also gave SpaceX opportunity to learn from a mistake before anything more serious occurred. They took the time to develop and install additional shielding around the engine mounts on the booster and enhanced the launch mount with a new water deluge system. Elon Musk recently posted in a Twitter response, We are proceeding very carefully. If there is RUD on the pad, Starship progress will be set back by about six months. And by RUD, he's referring to a rapid unscheduled disassembly, also known as an explosion. This comes after Ship 24 and Booster 7 were fully stacked on the launch mount for the first time on October 16th, something that we hadn't witnessed since the old 420 stack was last seen in March of this year. There's clearly been a lot of progress made in that time. Most notably, we're now seeing the mechanical arms of the launch tower doing all of the lifting and stacking work for both the ship and the booster. The old crane system has been completely eliminated. On this most recent attempt, it took SpaceX about three hours to successfully complete the full stack, and that's pretty good for a first run-through. Obviously, that process can be made much faster with some practice. We're remembering here that Elon is targeting up to three launches per tower per day. That's some rapid reusability. And then there are the landings. We've heard some inclinations that SpaceX might actually attempt to land the booster back at Starbase after the first orbital flight, assuming that everything goes perfectly according to plan. It's going to be scary, but they've got to try it out to know if it works. As the booster comes down, the chopstick arms come out to gently grab the rocket and cradle it to a stop. What's interesting is that the latest images of Starship 26 and 27 make it look like they won't be receiving heat shields or aero flaps, which means that they would not be intended for re-entry. It makes me wonder if they're building these expendable dummy ships to use for booster landing tests so that they can ace that maneuver before trying to land a starship on the tower as well. Either way, that's getting ahead of the game. The next big step is to do a full-scale static fire test with the ship and booster together. That is something that we assumed was coming shortly after the full stack was complete, but for whatever reason SpaceX immediately took the rocket back apart and set the ship on the ground. So, the sequence of events that we are looking for would be a restack on the launch mount, followed by a series of engine static fire tests, likely building up in groups until they are firing all 33 booster engines at once. That is going to be a critical test for the exceptionally complex plumbing structure in the thrust section of the booster. Elon has said that starting a Raptor engine is a delicate dance, and 
That has to happen 33 times in perfect synchronicity. That will be interesting. Then there is the wet dress rehearsal. This is where you fill the rocket with cryogenic oxygen and methane and pretend like it's about to launch. They take the countdown all the way to the point just before the main engines would fire and then they stop. The idea is to test every system up until the point of no return. And then you disassemble the whole vehicle and bring it back to the construction bay for a final check over before sending it back to the launch pad, restacking the two stages, doing a final static fire test, and then attempting to reach space. So it's a very complex process. And like Elon Musk said, SpaceX is proceeding very carefully. As much as this company has a history of being headstrong and blowing stuff up over and over again before getting it right, with incredibly gigantic rocket and equally incredibly expensive launch system, it's probably best if they don't blow this one up. At least not on the ground. If it explodes in the air, then we're all good, it'll make for a great show, and Ship 25 and Booster 8 will be on deck quickly to try it again. And that's the beauty of this system. As long as they don't wreck that launch tower, then they can continue orbital testing with a fairly rapid launch cadence. There will always be a new Starship and booster ready to step in and carry on in the ashes of its predecessor. And again, this is all happening in plain view of the general public, so we get to watch it all go down live in 4K resolution from multiple camera angles. And you can actually join us for one of our live watch parties in our Discord server. There's a link down below in the description. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.